Hello, I am Enrique Barra Arias. I work at Technical University of Madrid and I am an ICT and e learning expert. This module 5 is entitled Exploring STEM in the Real World Virtual Visits to Research Centers. The main aim in this module is to know how STEM are applied in the real life through some kind of virtual visits or through some real experiences. My presentation will follow this index. We will see how to introduce the virtual visits in the classroom, some steps, some technology issues, the barriers, and how to motivate and engage your students. And finally, I will introduce the two virtual visits that we will do as real experiences. Well, how to introduce the virtual visits in the classroom? In the first place, as a virtual excursion. As a replacement of the traditional excursion or the field trip. Why? To reduce costs. So you can go to more virtual excursions than field trips or traditional excursions. But also because with a virtual excursion you can go to places that you are not allowed otherwise. For example, a security center or maybe that to places that you can't go otherwise. For example, the space station. Another possibility is, a is as a complement of the traditional excursion, either before or after the traditional excursion. Before the traditional excursion, to motivate and engage your students to go to the traditional excursion, to the field trip, to prepare some topics, to start talking with the expert, to, with the researcher, or after the traditional excursion, just to, to review some concepts or to, or to see how things have, have evolved. For example, if you went to a zoo, you can also connect like months after and, and see the animals again and how they have evolved. Another possibility is to connect with an expert and carry out certain experiments, have a presentation or use digital resources. The experiments nowadays are most of them digital, so they can done in a virtual way through a video conference. But also you can receive an expert presentation like this one very easily. Or the expert can use digital resources like simulations or any kind of electron microscope, for example, that we will see. Also, these virtual visits can be used to prepare for practical lessons or problems. So your students will be more motivated as they see uh, that these practical lessons and these problems are real world, have real world applications. Finally, to prepare a foreign language or for career counseling. Uh, most of the experts will speak in English, so your students will be able to learn this language and uh, the experts will talk about their daily life, their real work, the, what they do, what they have studied. They can also give some kind of advices and help your students to decide what they will have to study and, they, and what they have to do to, to become a STEM expert. Well, what are the main steps to introduce the, these virtual visits in the classroom? In the first place, check that you have ICT, Information and Communication Technologies, and that they work. Then decide what is the, your purpose, your objective for the visit. Search for an adequate research center, contact them and schedule the visit. And finally, tell the students and prepare it with dedication. So, just as a brief summary, check the ICT and it works, decide, contact and then prepare everything. We will see this mm, in several slides now. The technology. Well, in the first place, you need a video conferencing platform like the one that, that we will use, that is WebEx, but you can also use some that are for free like Google Hangouts or MassMe.tv. You just need an, a Google account. The bandwidth, uh, at least one megabyte up, upstream and two megabytes downstream because you need to send your video and audio and also receive the expert or the, or the researcher video and audio. The audiovisuals, you need a webcam, a microphone and loudspeakers or headphones. If you are connecting alone, alone uh, use headphones so you don't introduce echo. 
But if you are connected from the classroom with your students, you will have to use loudspeakers. But be careful not to put your loudspeakers near the microphone so you don't introduce the echo. And finally, you will need, indeed, a computer and a laptop that is powerful enough. What are the main barriers? In the first place, the availability of experts. You have to contact them and schedule at the same time that you have the classroom with your students. Uh, the experiment, the expert should be available. But you will see that there are a lot of experts and a lot of institutions that have people uh, dedicated to this kind of dissemination activities. So this is not so difficult as it might seem in, in the beginning. Also the language might be an issue. If, you, if your students does, do not know English, for example, you will have to find an expert in your own language. Then, how to integrate the virtual visits, visits in the lesson plan? In some countries, uh, teachers are allowed to do what they want in the lesson plans in their, in their curriculum, but in some other countries, this might be an issue and a barrier. So, they are considered extracurricular activities. So, this depends on the country and on the scenario. Finally, the technology might be an issue. Maybe you don't have the ICT or you don't have a video conferencing tool adequate. How to motivate and engage your students? In the first place, set expectations and use them. So tell them that they are going to go to a, to a virtual place, but this is a real place. They will meet a, a real scientist, a real researcher. So in the second place, take the needed time to prepare the virtual visit with your students. Study background concepts in advance. So the, the previous days, you should study some concepts, some gap background concepts, and also explain, explain the real application of these concepts. So make references to the virtual visits that we will that you will do. Finally, make students uh, have questions ready. The visit facilitator. In our visits, it will be me, but in your visits, it will be you. You will be the one managing the, the, the virtual visit, the one in the middle between the students and the researcher. Also, the, the most important of everything is to make the students part of the experience. So you, you, you need to have a good projection, an audio, so they can see and hear what is happening, but also make them have questions ready and, and do them to the expert. Why? Because this is not just some kind of presentation. This is an interactive experience. So they can talk with the expert. They can ask questions. They can even keep in contact. Finally, a visit summary and an evaluation. Students are also are always more motivated when they are going to be evaluated. And also in the same day, in the, ne in the next day of the virtual visits, you could do a, a visit summary. In the first visit, we will go to BIFI, that is the Institute for Biocomputation and Physics of Complex Systems. They have a lot of researchers, different researchers working there from physicists, chemistry experts, biologists, a lot of different experts. Uh, and their STEM area are science and technology. The researcher in this case will be Fermin Galan, and we will see experiments and application of citizen science. This is very important because your students will be able to connect and to uh, follow this kind of experiments, to participate in real world experiments. Also, we will see the data centers and how they monitor them live. Uh, through live webcams and real data. Finally, the biotechnology laboratory working with human stem cells. And in a final virtual visit, we will go to the nanotechnology center. It is located at the University of Cambridge. Uh, they have more than 300 researchers working there, and they do a lot of things related with nanotechnology and nanoscience. Uh, this visit is also very interesting. Their STEM area is science, technology and engineering and the researcher is Harry Bison. Uh, he will show us a virtual visit to, re to their research facilities, also what they do in their work 
and some experiments that take place there. Finally, we, we can see through some kind of videos uh, and photographs how they use the scanning electron microscope. For example, we can see we will see uh, a butterfly wing uh, with a lot of zoom. So it's really interesting. And as a final recommendation, just enjoy your visits and make your students enjoy these kind of experiences that are very motivated and very engaging. Thank you very much.